Hey YouTube, it's your boy Widgie here, coming at you with some more Age of Empires 3 Definitive Edition, and I'm going to be continuing the beginner's guides. Now, I've done about six or seven on the channel so far, but the majority of them were all the way back in 2021. And the crazy thing is, I haven't even done one for Lakota, which is one of my main civilizations. So that is what we're going to be doing today, and as per usual with the previous ones, we're going to be breaking it down into three things. The first one is going to be looking at the unique units, buildings, and features of the Civ. The second is going to be looking at an overall deck just a deck overview mainly sort of 1v1 land and water variants and then finally we're going to be looking at a nice juicy opening that you can give a go relatively straightforward that you can give a go on the ladder and have some fun all right let's get into it all right, ladies and gents, let's have a look at the unique units, buildings and features of the civilization. And this is on the Age of Empires fandom website. And you can go on this, of course, have a look at it yourself. I'm not going to go through all of this, but let's have a look at the overview first and the unique things of the civilization. They're mainly composed of cav units, um, having 200 population from the beginning. So you don't need to build any houses. This is a great kind of starter native civ. If you want to get into the natives, I recommend Lakota because you don't have to worry about building houses instead you get teepees and they basically uh, increase they can increase population uh, HP and attack of nearby units but mainly it's for gathering rate is what they're used for and let's have a quick scroll down here and here of course is the overview and the features so this is the starting crates that you have all trading posts are visible which is really nice for newer players as well not knowing where the TPs are on the map can be difficult always have population cap at the maximum but can only build walls from industrial age the war chief aura increases the speed of nearby friendly units very good if you have cav with those units very good for mobility for raiding that kind of stuff cannot gather coin by mining have to build a tribal marketplace that's the same with all other civs and the community plaza once again is something that the natives have and you choose a tribal council to advance in age Let's have a look at some of the shared Native American units. One of the ones that we're just going to look at mainly here is the healer. Now, the healer is very similar to the warrior priest from the Aztecs. So the healer is a unit that can do really well on the community plaza. That is something that, you know, most of the time you won't be using as a beginner. Let's have a quick look further down here. We can have a look at the unique Lakota units. So we have the war chief, of course, that we've mentioned, can build outposts, trading posts, and also has the speed upgrade for your units. The Chetan or Setan Bowman here, foot archer, good against infantry. We have the club warrior, which is essentially your pike units, good against cavalry. The Wakina, which is the age three skirm unit, very, very good uh, infantry and light cav. The Axe Rider, a great raiding unit in age two, and also generally a good unit overall throughout the ages, a nice heavy cav unit. The Bow Rider, another kind of um, great anti-cav unit here. Rifle Rider, this is an interesting one. This Rifle Rider is good against cav, heavy infantry, and artillery. So the Rifle Rider is kind of your culverin unit. It's a unit that's actually really good against ships as well. It doesn't really make much sense to me. Me, but I was trying to understand what is the counter to, to ships if you have land units and it is the rifle rider. The Tashunki Prowler, stealthy horsemen that grow in strength as they grow in number and the Takalosh Soldier which is the superior lance cav carrying horseman. And finally, we have uh, a unique Lakota building, which is obviously the TP. Very, very crucial right at the start of the game and throughout as well, making sure that your villagers are within the TP aura, which is going to basically provide um, HP and gathering rate bonuses. And we have some ceremonies here on the community plaza, the charging one, which increases siege damage. Very important to understand that. And the Takala ceremony, which spawns Takala soldiers. So there we go, guys. That is the unique units, buildings and features of the civilization. Now let's have a quick look at the deck before we get into the opening strategy. Right guys, we are in the game. Let's have a quick look at the deck overview here. Now I do have three different variants of the deck, but this is the beginner's guide. And really, if you want to get 
sort of to grips and really get your chops around a decent kind of opening and really practice it, I would recommend the Land Rush overall. Now, this is the Land Rush deck that I have, and we're gonna go through this from left to right here. Not gonna go through all of it, of course. Some of these you probably already know. So kind of the first one we're gonna be going for is the Three Villagers. Um, very good, wanna get that eco really cemented. We then, as we go into Age 2, want to be going ideally for four Axe Riders first. We want to get it off the mark very quickly because Lakota are really good at raiding. They're a very good raiding civilization, and that's one of the best ways to get the eco advantage against your opponent is to raid their vills, annoy them, disrupt them, just stop them from gathering resources so you get the upper hand. So that's going to be our second card. Now, the third and fourth card will be unit cards as well. And it depends on the situation. I know you guys hate that. It depends on the situation. What does that mean? But like, for example, um, you can obviously go for the six club warriors here. And then you can go for the seven Chetan Bowmen. And then for even more pressure after that, go for the Takala Soldiers, which is the two Lance carrying Cav. That is kind of the order that I would suggest you go. Go three Vils, go four Axe Riders, then go for two more military unit cards, and then decide whether you want to go for the Lance Cavalry or go into either Wood or Gold, depending on how you want to do it. Or if you want to stay age two longer, you can also go for the Great Hunter, 20% faster gather rate, 10% yield, and also gives you an amount of what you've granted so far. I know that's a lot of information. We can also see there's some in age three here. We do obviously have age four. We have the advanced captured mortars. That's a really good way of having decent siege later in the game. But of course, there is the deck. We're going to be jumping straight in to the opening, the beginner opening, up to around seven, eight minutes in the game. Obviously, lots of things can change depending on the map, the sieve you're playing against. But hopefully, this will give you a great overview. All right. Let's get into it. Right, ladies and gents, let's get into the actual build order. I'm playing against Extreme AI here, so it's a little bit of a challenge. There's going to be a little bit of darting around quite high APM here, but I'm going to try and slow it down, obviously explain the card order and what I'm doing. So let's get into it. Okay, here we go. So what you want to do is just gather your crates up and then queue the villager as soon as you can. Get your explorer on the nearest treasure and get him exploring the map as usual. Your explorer is one of the fastest, or I think it is actually the fastest in the game. So get him around the map as quickly as you can. And what we're going to be doing once we've collected the crates is simply just go straight onto food. All veils onto food. You can see that I stupidly put a couple on wood here and I quickly take them off. And then you want to get a market down. So market down is what you need. And the reason that you're going to be getting a market is because you're going to be selling food to then buy wood. And that's going to give you your hunting dogs and your TP. When I say TP, I'm going to mean the actual TP building, not a trade post. So you can see there, I sold one bit of food, then bought wood to get the hunting dogs. And TP placement is really crucial. You can see there that I placed it just so that there's best coverage of the gold and also wood as well. So think about where you're placing your TP. Ideally, you want nearly all of your villagers to be in the range of a TP when they're gathering. So you can see hunting dogs on the way, and I'm going to try and just sort my herd out here. It does get a little bit annoying around the TP, as you can see, and just try and get it as close to the TC as possible. You can see here, I'm, I am trying to do as much as I can here. I'm not the best player in the game, guys. Just want to clarify that. So there is going to be a little bit of rustiness here, of course. But hopefully you'll get the overall idea of this opening. And it's going to be a sort of land rush um, infantry kind of opening. We're going to be mainly using infantry here with the Lakota rather than cavalry. Now, there are many other kind of openings and strategies you can do, but I really recommend this. And of course, we're going to be selecting the 1v1 land rush, which is that one right there. We're going to be going for that. And of course, as I mentioned previously, we're going to be going for three villagers first. And this is all you need to do. You just need to use your explorer. Ideally looking for food treasures and wood is very good. Food enabling you to age up quicker. Wood is going to help you get that war hut down quicker in transition from age one to age two. 
So we're getting ready now. We're on 15 villagers. That is a perfect amount that we need. And look at this perfect timing. Fantastic. We're going to be going for the messenger, which is the fast age up. And the minute we do that, all veals are going to be going over to wood. We are going to maybe have one or two that is going to be bringing the hunts in. That's quite important. So always have one or two to bring the next two hunts closer to your TC, which you can see that I'm doing here. But everybody else needs to be on wood. And then you want to immediately think about pulling two or three villagers into the middle of the map. So we want to get those moving immediately into the middle of the map so we can start to think about where we're going to be building our forward war hut. So the age up has just come in now. Fantastic. You can see I've nearly got the right amount here for the war hut. It is 250 wood. And when you've got that 250 wood, start to take off some of those veils off of wood and start putting them back onto food because we're going to need to make sure that we've got villager creation. And there we go. Veal in queue. And we're going to need to pull some of those veils off of wood, which I'm doing right now. Maintaining herding. Make sure you bring in those herds in as best you can. I'm trying to do the best here with this one. I'm struggling a little bit. And the kind of sweet spot is kind of difficult for me right now. I haven't really figured out. I think it's something like six or seven on wood is, is kind of ideal. But it depends on what unit you want to start creating from your war hut. So whether it's a Chetan Bowman or whether it's a Club Warrior will determine your kind of macro. And you can see here that I'm immediately getting the next card, which is for Axe war Riders. Sorry. And I've put the military garrison it's very important that the, the military shipments come out of that war heart. it's very important and you can see that i'm actually queuing chetan bowman rather than club warriors and this all kind of depends and i'm just gonna pause it there very briefly it does really depend on what kind of opponent you're going for what you've scouted you can see I, i've scouted a stables and a rax so chetan is kind of an ideal one to go for but of course, sometimes if you're playing against Dutch and you need high siege, you need to siege your banks, you need to, or maybe you're against Swede, you need to siege torps. Maybe immediately queuing the club warrior is a better option than immediately going for the Chatan. But the Chatan is the one that I go for there. And I'm still maintaining the herding, trying to get the herd in. You can see. I really need to try and get the herding in. And look at this push from the Extreme AI. Quite scary here. Having to put the Vils into the War Hut. Chetan do pop out there, unfortunately, slightly on the Hussars. And the AI is going to be trying to do that. But I'm going to try and use my Axe Riders here to clear up the Hussars. Whilst doing a little bit of micro here. Microing the Chetan there to pick off the Pikeman. And I managed to retreat Napoleon here. So off he goes back to his base. And immediately continue Villager in queue. Maintain hunt, pull hunt in. Try and get that sweet spot for your macro on food and wood because that's all you need. All you need is food and wood. And you can see there I put a TP actually at the war hut there because I want to start getting the hunt, which is right there. And now I have my next card. So once again, it's going to be another unit shipment. We're going to go with the six clubman warrior now. And I'm really trying to pull that hunt in, and it's it's really not playing ball. And I'm, I'm trying to pull this one back in as well. It's being very difficult. And you can see now I'm just using the Axe Riders to get a bit of information. Always use the Axe Riders to raid, get some info, get some scouting. Don't try and lose the Axe Riders. You really don't want to lose them too early on. It's okay to lose them a little bit later in the game, but don't lose them very, very early on. And you can see I've managed to get my next batch of Chetan out. And look at this perfect time in here. Club and Warriors are going to be popping from the War Hut. Boom, there they are, fantastic. And they're going to be jumping on the Hussars here, doing a good job. And I'm just trying to get the Axe Riders out of there. Just trying to micro. It's always important to try and get better at the micro there. You don't want to lose the Axe Riders. And beautifully, I've swung that round there, and I'm going to be taking down the Crossbowman once again, sorting out the hunting. That's what it's about. And you can see here I'm training the Chetan Bowman right now. And now we're in sort of seven minutes at this point, and we're feeling pretty good. We've cleared up two attacks, further pikemen coming in. I'm just going to use my infantry here to deal with the pikemen. And then my next military card is going to be the seven Chetan Bowman. So pretty much after this, guys, going to be honest with you, all you need to do is just continue with this kind of play, just constantly be creating units out of the war hut. 
And then when you've kind of got three unit shipments down, your next decision is going to be whether you're going to further continue with that or whether you're going to go down more of an eco route and start getting some resource shipments. So that's kind of the decision that you need to make. And we'll just zip ahead a little bit here. Okay, so now we've managed to really get in the base here. We're just sieging that stables. That's going to be going down. And there was the choice there. You could see I was deciding between the Takala soldiers or a wood shipment. And I've got to say, it all depends on the situation, guys. If you think you can take out your opponent and end them there, go for the Takalas. If your opponent is maybe thinking about getting into H3, and they do manage to, Having that wood is great because you can use the wood to get the TP line. You can start to get more of the map, get another war hut down, get another, get a stables down, start going into cav options in H2. Or you could scrap the 700 wood and go for 700 coin and then macro for H3. There's many, many possibilities after this point that you can do. But I'm hoping that this has been helpful for you guys. And I'm just gonna leave it there, seven, eight, nine minutes in, Hopefully you've got a rough idea of the opening, the style of play, and what you need to do. So there you go, guys. A nice Lakota beginner guide for you. Hopefully that's cleared a few things up, how to play them. And of course, there's so many different ways that you can play this sieve, many different openings and scenarios that you can do. But really, if you're trying out the sieve, I really recommend the good old infantry rush with them. It's very good, nearly against all civilizations. And as long as you kind of adapt later on in the game and you understand whether you need to take the TP line, whether you need to continue in H2, whether you need to maybe think about going to H3, the more you play, the more comfortable you would get so guys i hope you enjoyed this let me know down in the comments below if you're going to give lakota a go they are a fantastic native sieve great beginners uh sieve two natives as well and um i'll catch you in the next video or the next stream catch you later guys Bye.